good news. We're finally going to get around to testing Henry. So we'll start off with the voltage and wattage as per usual. So we'll switch them on. Okay. And then now the wattage. I have seen it run as high as about 700-ish before. So that's running a little bit lower than normal. Or than it has, perhaps I should say. But... It's not too huge a difference. And airflow with the body. And then we'll test the suction at the body. I know the uh, needle tends to shake a lot with these tub style vacs and I don't know why. Okay. Maybe it's just with the hose on it then. Alright, and we'll do the hose airflow next. As you can see, this actually widens out. It's a tapered hose, so it gets wider as it goes towards the body and narrows as it goes towards the attachment end. This keeps it flexible, but also allows more airflow because it will experience less resistance at the wider points of the hose. So, let's flip this on. I think the highest I've ever gotten from the hose end was about 108. And now the hose suction. Ah, there's that signature kind of wobbling I was mentioning. So I guess it really only does that with the hose attached. Disconnect this. It makes quite a horrible noise without the little adapter on it. I figured I would also use this uh, curve tube too, because typically it's going to be attached to the vacuum, especially if you're cleaning floors. I like the little stub for any above the floor purposes though, much more flexible. Yeah, it went down a little bit. Helps if I'm actually over the right place. But suction seems to be about the same, which is good. And now we've got the wands attached, so we'll run the test again. I've decided to leave the telescopic portion collapsed. It really doesn't add too much length. So let's redo this. Maybe a very slight drop in suction, because it seems like the minimum point of the needle 
has gone back to about 78, but that's still pretty good. And we finally come down to the nozzle. It seems like I always have some difficulty getting these sealed. Hopefully the tape will help this time around. But these nozzles are quite leaky. Anywhere there's a joint, like uh, around the pedal here, around this swivel joint here, around here, it's gonna leak. But it still does a pretty good job. So, let's fire it up, see how it does. I don't think that's too far off where I have gotten it before. Maybe a little higher though. I guess I can't really remember. And then we'll do novel suction. Yeah, like I said, lots of leaking. Right around here. Right around here. I suppose, though, you probably don't want too much of it because it would become very hard to push. So. Alright, figured we'll do the typical pickup demo. Got some rolled oats on the floor, but why don't we do a quick recheck of the voltage and wattage? Because in this configuration, its wattage should be lower. Eh, that's not too far away from the 620 rating. And despite its 20 inches of lift, you can see that it is capable of picking up the carpet. Not bad for a machine without a brush roll. And I just realized I was in portrait. The nice thing about these combo tools is, with a flick of a switch, you can go onto your hard floors. I prefer a dedicated hard floor tool to the combo tools, well. I've always felt like the brushes are a little bit too stiff, but it works. Oh, yes, and my Henry's been modified to have a power nozzle port so I can actually use it with electric heads. It requires me to use a different hose, but that's okay. So yeah, there we have our airflow test and little demo of Henry. If anyone has ever been curious about them or is considering getting one, I would recommend them. It's a very simple, easy to use machine. It's quiet, it's powerful. The bags are inexpensive. I mean, there's really a lot to like about it. And look how cute it is. <laughs> yeah, I would totally recommend one. They are definitely one of my favorite straight suction canisters.